We're here uh, at the 2007 Regolith Excavation Challenge. We've got teams competing to excavate lunar regolith simulant in a sandbox full of what's called JSC-1A is our simulant. And they uh, have to excavate more than 150 kilograms of uh, this material uh, in 30 minutes of time to do that. And they c can't use more than 30 watts of power uh, in doing that. And they have to be fully autonomous. NASA is doing the Centennial Challenges competition to encourage innovation, creativity, and lateral thinking. We have ideas inside NASA on how to excavate regolith, which is lunar soil, but we would like to get some input from other people from different walks of life, different industries that may have different ideas on how to get this done. The JSC-1A lunar regolith simulant was created by a company called Orbitech. Essentially they mine a material out of a, a cinder cone in Arizona and then it's ground up into different particle sizes which are then recombined in the right combinations to make the particle size distribution as close as possible to what you see in the samples that were brought back on Apollo missions. Uh, it does have small particles that do get airborne very easily and so it creates a lot of dust. One of the major challenges in operating on the moon is the dust that's created. Uh, there's footage of the uh, lunar rover sort of driving around and I guess one of the fenders came off and so there was this giant rooster tail of dirt shooting up uh, from behind the rear tire and of course once it does get elevated, I guess since there's no atmosphere on the moon you can't really say airborne, but it does stick to everything really easily and so that very easily gets into mechanisms and gears and things which is one of the things that we're learning about from these teams is that this dust is getting inside of it and it is uh, keeping them from uh, in some cases from, from operating the way they might prefer. Lunar regolith is highly cohesive and the particles are very sharp and angular. On a beach you'll get round particles. Every grain will be round because it's been weathered and eroded by the water and the sun and the wind. But uh, the regolith has not been eroded so all the particles are sharp and angular. There's also no air on the moon and the vacuum and the sharpness of the particles have the effect of interlocking all these particles and making it much more stable than sand or other soil on Earth. They have to excavate continuously for 30 minutes and that basically is to uh, show us that they can operate for a sort of lengthy amount of time in order to uh, show that their machine could be used in a, a real excavation type scenario. It's a lunar analog in a sense. Obviously there's certain things that we couldn't do. Uh, we couldn't have one sixth gravity but we can reduce the weight limit for their excavators so that they are lighter and so when you look at the, the force that's required to penetrate the surface of the regolith, uh, you can then offset by that by the equal and opposite force, which is much lower on the moon because the gravity is lower. And so we were able to uh, have them be at a 40 kilogram limit, which uh, if they were on the moon, you know, they could maybe have a heavier machine, but they still would get the same um, reactive force when trying to uh, penetrate the surface. The 30 watt power limit, uh, 30 watts is not a lot of power. Uh, when you think of a 30 watt light bulb, you know that it's not very bright. Uh, when you say that like a can opener, an electric can opener is about 90 watts. So 30 watts is very difficult to have a fully autonomous machine uh, operating on 30 watts uh, in a material that's very strange to work with. So on the moon you feasibly would have you know, limited amounts of power to work with, solar cells that output only so much power uh, for you know, the amount of time they're exposed to the sun. You have limited exposure to the sun for those solar cells. So between all those things uh, it was determined that 30 watts is probably a good uh, limit to, to set out for this competition. The 150 kilogram excavation uh, requirement was timed with the 30 minute excavation attempt time so that it required the excavation rate that would be useful uh, for oxygen production say on the moon. So uh, this is uh, set up to be sort of a lunar analog activity but at the same time we're really just testing one subsystem of the whole uh, architecture so to speak. The teams have been required not to use any physical processes that wouldn't work on the moon. For instance, suction or uh, you know, using air to maybe blow on the regolith or, or anything like that uh, has not been allowed because obviously with the moon, moon being in a vacuum you wouldn't be able to use those types of techniques. So a fairly challenging set of rules to, uh, to abide by. Uh, so far we've had three teams uh, do their excavation attempts None have been successful as of yet, but we've all learned a lot from the process of watching this happen. One of the teams, they had a, uh, you know, a part that failed, and so their machine wouldn't move after that. Uh, another one operated perfectly for the whole time, but it didn't quite uh, dig up enough material to make the, the right excavation rate uh, to get the limit they wanted uh, in time. 
and then another um, it just turns out you know without having a pre knowledge of the the simulant properties and how to operate in it they weren't able to tune their machine in uh, to to excavate quick enough in order to uh, get enough uh, regolith in the, uh, into the collector well, the current rules do not uh, accommodate uh, an, an interruption in the challenge or the test to repair a problem. Well, I'm sure the idea is that if this were on the moon, you couldn't send up a repair person. Precisely. And the rules use the word autonomy for that, and, and this would not uh, translate to autonomy if you have a, a failed uh, issue here. Typically what engineers do is rely, either rely on, on, on a lots of margin on the load or redundancy, where autonomy is required. Uh, not only do you have to have that control of autonomy, but you have to have redundancy to deal with issues like this. Well, we learned a lot in the operational aspect of excavating regolith. It's not simple and a lot of things can go wrong. You have to have a good logistics train, you have to have spare parts. If something does break, you have to have an easy way to fix it. Uh, we saw a few interesting mechanisms that uh, rotated and collected the regolith and so we saw some details that were interesting. We probably wouldn't apply them to systems in exactly this way, but we'll take the ideas and integrate them into our thinking for future systems. We're doing this challenge again in 2008 and the prize money is doubled so it will be $500,000 and any prize money that's not claimed during this competition will be rolled over into the 2008 competition. And so potentially we could have up to $750,000 in prize money. So we're very excited about that. And also the teams uh, that have come here and competed today, uh, they're excited about that as well because it's another chance uh, for them to kind of fine tune their designs and, and make some changes based on what they've learned here today and to give it another shot.